The United Nations Organization denounced that the Israeli Occupation Army is killing at least one child a day in Lebanon as part of its aggression against the country. In Sudan, more than 130 women committed suicide in a single day for fear of being sexually abused by warring military groups in the nation's civil war. In Argentina, after Wednesday's strike, unions have claimed the protests have just begun and they remain on the war path against the government of President Javier Milei. Hello and welcome to From the South. I'm Alejandra Garcia from Telesur Studios in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news. Stay with us. The United Nations organization denounced that the Israeli Occupation Army is killing at least one child a day in Lebanon as part of its aggression against the country. The occupying troops launched at least 11 airstrikes against residential areas in the Lebanese city of Jamur al shafkif where dozens of houses were destroyed. At the same time, Israeli warplanes bombarded the town of Baalbek and issued an evacuation alert for the nearby populations in order to advance in their incursion into the territory. On Thursday, the United Nations interim force in Lebanon, Unifil, was the target of over 30 attacks, most of them coming from the Israeli occupying forces. Unifil's spokesperson, Andrea Tinelli, stated so, adding that at least seven of the hostile actions perpetrated by Israel were deliberate. The Israeli aggression have not only targeted equipment or watchtowers of the Unifil, but also some of their members have been wounded. The Unifil has been deployed there since Israel invaded the country in 1978, and nowadays Unifil members are concerned over both the Israeli actions and those of the Hezbollah resistance movement as their lives are at stake. more than 77 people were killed and dozens are still missing after an Israeli bombardment of a building in the northern Gaza Strip. Likewise, more than 300 people were sheltering in the Beit Lahia area, including families from the Havali refugee camp. Several victims are still under the rubble due to the constant aggression of the Israeli regime. The Ministry of Health reported that since October 7, 2023, the Israeli occupation forces have killed more than 43,000 people and wounded at least 101,000 more, most of them children and women. The first meeting of the Global Alliance for the Creation of a Palestinian State and the end of Israel's occupation of the territories was held in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia on Wednesday. This meeting, considered as a decisive step for the Palestinian State, is part of the agreements reached at the United Nations General Assembly in September. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas thanked King Salman bin Abdulaziz and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman for their leadership. The Palestinian leaders also emphasized the need to implement the United Nations resolution on the Inter-American Court of Justice within a specific time frame, as well as the implementation of Security Council Resolution 2735 on a ceasefire aid and the delivery of humanitarian aid in Gaza. China rejected the trade restrictions imposed by the United States and the European Commission's decision to impose additional fees on electric vehicles manufactured in the country. According to the Ministry of Commerce, the major target sectors such as chips, artificial intelligence and quantum computing. In a statement, Beijing denounced that most of the, the industries related to this field are not connected to national security. However, all of them will be affected, which will disrupt normal economic and trade cooperation between the two countries' enterprises. Beijing also rejected the European Commission's decision to impose additional fees on electric vehicles manufactured in the Asian giants. The U.S. has withdrawn from the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, developed Typhon mid-range missile system, and used it as a tool to maintain its hegemony. It has made willful deployment and stirred up troubles, which increased the risk of war in the region. It has been proven time and again that the U.S. is a real saboteur to peace and a troublemaker. 
In addition, the Chinese spokesman stated that the Liberation Army will prepare for combat and increase its military capability to fight, win and safeguard its national sovereignty and territorial integrity. The Taiwan issue is at the very core of China's core interests and the first red line that must not be crossed in China-U.S. relations. China urges the U.S. to fully recognize the severe consequences of arming Taiwan which would surely backfire and not to go further down the wrong path. Several pieces of U.S. weaponry will not close the cross-strait military power gap, still less stop the historical trend of China's reunification. The People's Liberation Army will continually improve its combat readiness, comprehensively enhance the military capability to fight and win, and firmly safeguard national sovereignty and territorial integrity. The Russian Defense Ministry reported that 21 Ukrainian missile drones had been intercepted in six regions and the Black Sea, south of the nation. The anti-aircraft force stopped Kyiv's new attack to commit terrorist attacks with unmanned aerial vehicles on Russian facilities. In this regard, the Defense Ministry recalled that both the United Kingdom and the Netherlands promised to finance the purchase of drones for Ukraine, thus leaving confirmation of their interest in taking part in strikes against civilians in Russia. We are going to take a short break now, but first we invite you to follow our special segment dedicated to the upcoming U.S. elections, only on Telesur today at 7.30 p.m. Quito time, 8.30 Caracas, New York and Havana time. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. In Belarus, President Alexander Lukashenko stressed the need to promote discussions on global conflicts and develop measures to overthrow modern challenges and threats. During the Minsk International Conference on Russian Security, the Belarusian president warned about the world's tendency towards militarization. In addition, Lukashenko stressed that the lack of control and balances has led to the weakening of regional and global security. At the event, which brings together close to 600 delegations from more than 40 countries, the Belarusian head of state ad advocated for unconditional dialogue as an instrument for the resolution of current conflicts. Do we need this in Europe? We don't. Neither Russia, nor Ukraine, nor we, nor you, the Eurasian continent, we don't need it, but the danger is great. That's why, today, before presenting any idea from one side or the other, as they say, a victory plan or anything else, maybe even nonsense, we have to sit down at the negotiating table without preconditions. President Lukashenko also urged the United States to withdraw its nuclear weapons from the Russian region in order to calm hostilities. In order to really calm the situation and create conditions for dialogue, it is necessary to remove the U.S. nuclear weapons from the territory of the Eurasian countries. This arsenal is an anachronism of the Cold War era. So we will not stand on the sidelines. I am responding to those who today are concerned about the fact that we have tactical nuclear weapons deployed on the territory of Belarus. In Sudan, more than 130 women committed suicide in a single day for fear of being sexually abused by warring military groups in the nation's civil war. The news came to light recently after a publication on social networks and has given way to a wave of denunciations comparable to the increase in sexual crimes. Hala al Karib, regional director of the Strategic Initiative for Women in the Horn of Africa, confirmed that the reports about the denunciation are absolutely true. Karib confirms that since the first day of the war, women have been subjected to brutal abuses and notes that in this conflict the main victims of the paramilitary forces are girls and women between 17 and 35 years of age.
In Spain, the Coast Guard rescue units recover a small boat with at least 75 people arriving from African countries. The maritime rescue indicated that the boat was seven miles south of the El Hierro Island and was transferred to the port of La Restinga. Immigrants from African countries continue to use the route that has been labeled by the Spanish government as the most dangerous in the world, traveling in boats through the Canary Islands. In this context, the Spanish authorities revealed that at least 42,000 people have arrived in the country by sea in 2024, which represents a 22% increase from the previous year. In Spain, the death toll after the flash floods that impacted the regions of Valencia and Castilla, La Mancha, has risen to 104 people as the search for the missing continues. The floods that were triggered by a weather phenomenon known locally as DANA, a Spanish acronym, acronym for High Altitude Isolated Depression, left many municipalities in Valencia without drinking water and some 75,000 people without in addition, thousands of cars have been destroyed, roads cut off, and areas isolated by water, mud, and landslides. In this context, the government has mobilized more than 1,200 troops from the Ministry of Defense, the Military Emergency Unit, and the Thermed Forces to assist in the rescue and cleanup of the large number of affected towns. In China, Super Typhoon Conray made landfall in Taiwan, raising 10-meter waves and forcing thousands of people to flee their homes. With maximum winds of 184 kilometers per hour, Conray hit the east coast at the town of Shengon at 1.40 p.m. local time, the Central Meteorological Administration reported. It had the same strength as Typhoon Gaemi, which was the most powerful storm to hit Taiwan in eight years, but Conray's radius of 320 kilometers made it the largest in nearly three decades. So far, at least 27 people have been injured by the storm, which has caused trees to fall and four landslides. Authorities have evacuated 8,600 people from their homes in Bulan counties and cities. In Colombia, the president of the Transnational Presidential Council of Haiti, Leslie Voltaire, stated that the Haitian biodiversity hasn't been lost on, it, on his keynote address at the Conference of the Parties, COP16, on biodiversity in Cali. The authority assured that Haiti is the cradle of historical bot botany in the Americas, although some media have to disseminate an unfavorable image. Notwithstanding, the Haitian biodiversity still retains its full vitality. The leader further asserted that many of Haitians harness the extensive variety of medical plants for their, their health needs. We have a second short break coming up, but before we invite you to visit our YouTube channel at Telesur English, there you'll be able to rewatch our interviews, top stories, special broadcasting, and more. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell to stay up to date on the world's most recent events. Final short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. The Prime Minister of Haiti, Gary Conil, was summoned to an urgent meeting by the Transnational Presidential Council to fight off the presence of alleged mercenaries in the country. The meeting that was set to happen on Wednesday afternoon was rescheduled to next week as per the Prime Minister's request. The petition for a gathering between the two government heads comes after several local media reported the alleged presence of mercenaries from a private security company in the capital, port au -Prince. 
At the same time, in El Salvador, the Congress approved on Wednesday to send a military contingent to Haiti for medical evacuations. The agreement passed with 57 votes of the 60 legislators of the unicameral Congress, controlled by the New Ideas Party of President Nayib Bukele, authorizes the incorporation of the national forces to the Multinational Security Support, MSS, mission led by Kenya. The Director of Legal Affairs of the Salvadoran Foreign Ministry, Patricia Aguilera, detailed that the agreement is subscribed to protect the condition of the MSS mission in Haiti, say, sealed among Haiti, El Salvador and the Organization of American States, OAS, so that the Salvadoran forces will only help to conduct medical evacuations operations. In Argentina, after Wednesday's strike, unions have claimed the protests have just begun and they remain on the warpath against the government of President Javier Milei. The measure carried out this Wednesday has already been baptized as, as the super strike since they managed to immobilize the whole nation. In this regard, the leaders of the National Transport board gathered to analyze the scenarios underlined the high rate of participation and announced more actions. Leaders of the Truck Drivers Association, pilots, airline workers and many other organizations also ratified the strike was only the first step of an ongoing plan of action. In Venezuela, the president, Nicolás Maduro, called on the people to work to strengthen tourism with the nations so the world that becomes a new window for the country's economic growth. During the presentation of the third edition of the National Tourism Award 2024 at the Humboldt Hotel in Caracas, the president pointed out that it is necessary to promote the tourism sector so that people can get to know the richness of Venezuela. In this sense, the Venezuelan head of state emphasized that the country is abundant in historical sites that can be made known through tourist plans. There are a million Chinese tourists who would like to come here. As a goal for the next two years, we have to guarantee Write it down and ask for help from artificial intelligence if it's necessary. Tenemos que garantizar, Alfred Nazare, usted como vicepresidente de esa área, tenemos que garantizar, compañero, Mr. Minister, we have to guarantee that, as I told President Xi Jinping when we recently met there in Kazan, Russia, we have to guarantee for the Venezuelan tourist engine the direct flight Beijing Caracas and a million Chinese tourists in the tourist sites and tourist services in Venezuela. In Mexico, citizens gear up for Day of Dead festivities. The Day of the Dead is celebrated in Mexico from 28th of October to November 2nd. But citizens prepare well in advance. Farmers sow flowers and artisans make decorations. Mexicans flock to the capital's market to buy flowers and food for their offerings to their dead loved ones. While in the evening, crowds fill the circular square as it is lit up and decorated with a mega offering to the dead. The market is really beautiful at this time because it is filled with flowers. A lot of people, a lot of tourists come. People really like it, they come to take pictures. Many tourists come because they find it interesting and they like the atmosphere here in the market. It's a very special day because we welcome our dead into our homes so that they can come and eat the food we have left for them as an offering. We have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net and join us on social media. We are on Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram and TikTok as well. For Telesur English, I'm Alejandra Garcia. Thank you for watching.